And then I want to um, welcome and thank you all. My name is Kim Laney and I'm your OLLI coordinator. Today's brown bag presentation is a Trinidad Memorial Lighthouse, um, past, present, and future with Jen West. Um, I want to thank all the friends of OLLI for their donation and their support to make these weekly brown bag presentations possible. Um, though their monetary donations really help make it possible for OLLI to offer um, these brown bag presentations. We also wanted to let you know that the um, Boomer Troop is back and they are having a virtual um, uh, event coming up the year that was on June 5th and 6th at 2 p.m. And um, here's the information here. And if you want more information, you can find it on the OLLI website as well as the Humboldt Light Opera Company website. Um, following today's presentation, we will make the recording available. Um, the best way to, to get a copy of that recording is to navigate to the um, OLLI website and look at the bottom of the web of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the brown bag presentation and you'll see um, this area where it says Mr. Presentation and if you click on that, it will take you to the recording. It does take us um, typically two to three days to get a recording up on our website. So just be aware that um, it won't be, it probably won't be there at the end of today. It'll take a couple of days. So we're just about ready to get started. Again, I'm asking that you mute yourself. Jan has indicated that she prefers to have the questions at the end of her presentation she'd like to go through. She's got lots of information to share and it's very possible that she'll answer your question during the course of her presentation. So if you have questions, go ahead and hold those questions and you can um, put them in the chat at the end or you can use, um, when it comes time for questions, you can raise your hand and we'll call on you to um, share your question. And, and we can do it either way, either verbally or um, you can do it written down. Um, I think that's everything that I have. Again, I just wanna thank you all for being here today, for staying connected. And Jane um, is going to go ahead and introduce our, um, our presenter today. Hi there, everybody. Welcome. And I want to welcome Jan West as our speaker today. She's a retired educator from Trinidad School and Humboldt State University. She's currently serving as co-president of the Trinidad Civic Club and is active in, I'll put the word, multiple community projects, which <laughs> she's welcome to explain. But she's a very active lady and she's been pivotal in helping to put the Trinidad White House back on the map. Go for it, Jen. Jan? I'm there, give me a second. Yes, I think there. Jen's getting her slideshow up on. Um, oh, okay. There we go. Perfect. So um, thank you for your introduction, Jane. Uh, thanks to Kim for hosting our Zoom session today and to the Ollie Brown Bag Lunch organizers for inviting me to share the story of the Trinidad Memorial Lighthouse, past, present, and future. So let's begin by thinking about what people remember most about Trinidad. Almost anyone who visits Trinidad remembers walking beside Little Trinidad Head on the pier. Pee Wee Tully Island and Grandma Rock are unforgettable, especially with a sunset like this one. People love to walk the beaches, especially the easily accessible Trinidad State Beach. The hike on Trinidad Head offers spectacular views while trekking by the cross, erected by the Trinidad Civic Club in 1913 to replace the remnants of the wooden cross placed there by Spanish explorers in 1775, and has been a site for many religious and matrimonial ceremonies. The beauty of these trails and beaches provides unforgettable memories.
Trinidad had it. Trinidad has great shops and restaurants for such a small town. Visitors remember the unusual items, the terrific <laughs> local art, the delicious food, and the friendly shopkeepers. Few visitors forget the beautiful ocean views from the many viewpoints along Trinidad's bluffs. Trinidad Head itself is striking and unforgettable, one of the most unusual and beautiful geographic formations on the California coast. All these features of Trinidad are remarkable, but the most photographed, most visited, most remembered site in Trinidad is the Memorial Lighthouse. Whether decorated for the holidays, featured in advertising, or viewed in the foreground of Trinidad. Trinidad. Being such an iconic landmark, Trinidad Memorial Lighthouse into a category of special significance. The previous slides depicted excellent reasons why the Memorial Lighthouse is important but its role in the designation of Trinidad as the Northern Gateway to the California Coastal National Monument makes it even more significant. Trinidad Head makes a visually appealing gateway for the National Monument. The original Trinidad Lighthouse is now preserved and is under a management plan with the Trinidad Rancheria, the city of Trinidad, the Yurok Tribe, the Bureau of Land Management, and other partners who are, quote, working together to help protect and provide for public enjoyment. The Trinidad Rancheria was the first tribe to sign, in California to sign a memorandum of understanding for stewardship of the California Coastal National Monument. Although the Memorial Lighthouse is no longer in its historic location on the bluff at the intersection of Trinity and Edward Streets, the new location near Trinidad Head offers historic interpretive advantages. The lighthouse preserves maritime navigational aids that were once part of the Trinidad Head Lighthouse. And tours, um, provided by the Trinidad Museum docents begin here at the Memorial Lighthouse. Understanding the value of the Memorial Lighthouse to the history of Trinidad is necessary to understand the importance of preserving it. Knowing more about the past and the history of both of these lighthouses will help us understand their significance today beginning with the Trinidad Head Lighthouse built in 1871 to protect ships at sea. The first lighthouse keeper was Jeremiah Kyler, who served for 17 years until his death. He was later followed by Captain Fred Harrington, who served for 26 years and during a storm witnessed one of the most astounding waves ever seen. Over 100 years ago, on December 31st, 1914, the lighthouse at Trinidad Head was assaulted by a wave of monstrous proportions. Harrington saw what happened firsthand because he was inside the top trying to keep the lamp burning, which was 196 feet above sea level. In journaling about the incident, he wrote that the wave fell over the top of the bluff and struck the lighthouse on the level of the balcony where he's standing. 
indicating that the wave was almost 200 feet high. His full report is available online if you'd like to read more details about this amazing incident. This photo will give you a better perspective of the height of that monstrous wave. The shelf where the lighthouse rests is 175 feet above sea level. President Teddy Roosevelt's United States Naval Fleet passed by the Trinidad Head Lighthouse in 1908. People gathered to watch the fleet sail past the lighthouse that day. Captain Harrington is standing on the balcony. The Fog Bell House was built in 1898 for the 4,000 pound bell and rests 125 feet above sea level. The bell operation was by using a clockworks mechanism to warn approaching ships of danger. The fog bell and the oil lantern were decommissioned by the Coast Guard after electricity came to Trinidad Head in the 1940s. The fog bell house is now called the fog signal house, but is no longer accessible to the public. The historic fog bell was displayed beside the Memorial Lighthouse, where it tolled 12 times at noon in honor of those commemorated at the site. The bell has now been moved with the Memorial Lighthouse to a temporary site in the Trinidad Harbor. In this photo, Malcolm Caddy, who was lightkeeper from 1932 to 1940, stands in front of the Victorian residences built for the original lightkeepers. In 1961, the Coast Guard raised this structure and built a triplex, but the triplex was so severely damaged in a storm in the 1990s that it was torn down in the year 2000 and no longer exists. You can see the lighthouse at the left edge of the photo, the residences and the water tower above them and near them. And then the bell tower you can see in the, at the right edge of the photo. And here's a closer view. For many years, visitors were only allowed to tour the lighthouse once a year during the Trinidad Fish Festival. With the Bureau of Land Management now overseeing the site, visitors can tour the lighthouse on the first Saturday of every month from 10 a.m. to noon with docents from the Trinidad Museum. Sometimes there is a special commemoration in January for the anniversary of that gigantic wave that struck the lighthouse on December 31st, 1914. An aerial view of the head in 1947 shows the location of the lighthouse site. This photo gives you the perspective of the lighthouse location on the head in relation to the town of Trinidad a location impossible to see from the town. Some people are confused about the two lighthouses and many think that the Memorial Lighthouse is the real lighthouse, but it is a replica of the original Trinidad Head Lighthouse. It is called Memorial because it is dedicated to the memory of 24 fishermen, Coast Guardsmen, pilots, and others lost at sea, and 245 people buried at sea. Each year, more names are engraved on the memorial wall for commemoration. 
The Memorial Lighthouse was built in 1949 by the Trinidad Civic Club. On land donated to the Civic Club by the Hallmark family in 1948, with the understanding that the Memorial Lighthouse would be built on the 45 by 50 foot parcel to display the historic maritime artifacts, which are the 1871 retired fourth order Fresnel lens and the 1898 historic fog bell from the original lighthouse. And under the stewardship of the club to remain a memorial for those lost or buried at sea. The plaque for those lost at sea hangs on the south side of the lighthouse. Another plaque of those lost at sea can be found on the left side of this original stone marker, which bears plaques of inscribed names on all sides. When space ran out on the original marker, the Civic Club placed plaques on the retaining wall at the site. The dates of birth are on the left, dates of death on the right. Those still living have no death dates. A second row of plaques was added as more space was needed. There are now 18 plaques. An anchor and flag pole were added to the site along with this plaque. To those who perished at sea, they will live forever in our hearts. Each Memorial Day weekend on a Sunday afternoon since 1995, the Trinidad Civic Club has organized a memorial ceremony for those commemorated at the site. Boy and Girl Scout members conduct a flag raising ceremony. The program includes bagpipe music, an invocation, a song and poem. A Coast Guard officer speaks about the duty and sacrifice of the men who died while trying to rescue others. The inscribed names of all who have died are solemnly read out loud. The Coast Guard helicopter, if not on a rescue mission, does a flyby, sometimes dipping its propeller in salute to the fallen. Taps is played, completing the moving ceremony. The Memorial Lighthouse has gone through a series of evolutions since its construction in 1949. This 1920 photo with the black arrow shows where Yurok tribal members lived on the bluff by the ocean in Chure village. The red arrow shows the eventual location of the Memorial Lighthouse. The Trinidad Civic Club honors the existence of both sacred sites. Construction of the Memorial Lighthouse began in 1949 and was dedicated on July 25th that same year. It was first built with a stairway so that people could access the balcony, but the steps were later removed for safety reasons. The top of the lighthouse was originally painted white but was painted red in 1974 for the 25th year celebration. The ladies of the Civic Club hire landscaping and maintenance for the grounds of the property, which vary from season to season and year to year, depending on the seasonal display of the plantings. Flowers in bloom and fall foliage add to the beauty of the site. It was a rare occurrence to have snow, but when we did in 1989, the Memorial Lighthouse was an amazing sight. At one point it was decided to install a fence for safety reasons. The Axel Lindgren Trail was built in front of the lighthouse to access 
access Old Holm Beach located directly below. That was the Axel Lindgren Jr. Trail. Later, a wheelchair accessible ramp was added by the city on adjacent property, along with benches for seating. Coastal erosion and heavy rainfall threatened to undermine the stability of the structure and the continued existence of the lighthouse. At that time, we were alarmed to find severe damage from winter rains and bluff erosion to the city property beside our Memorial Lighthouse site and to the parking lot on the street above. During the winter of 2016-17, the soil turned to a pudding consistency and began sliding down the slope. The saturated soil sloughed off and moved down the embankment. The amount of movement could easily be observed by its effect on the wheelchair ramps. This slide shows how close the earth movement was to the lighthouse, to the edge of the southwest corner of the sidewalk surrounding it, which was cracked and slightly leaning. The lighthouse itself did not lean, but was in a precarious position. The club hired an engineering firm to conduct geological studies at the site. Ground instruments detected no movement of the Memorial Lighthouse itself prior to its move to the temporary location. The map shows the active slide area on the embankment that threatened the lighthouse and Edward Street. The city of Trinidad removed the sidewalks and benches along with the parking lot and is in the planning process to shore up the embankment in order to save Edward Street. We thought that the Memorial Lighthouse would always exist at the end of Trinity Street. The reality was that changing conditions made its current site unsustainable. And so began the plans to move the lighthouse. Our engineers determined that there was a more stable location on our Civic Club property about 20 feet to the east. So we applied for an emergency permit to relocate the lighthouse away from the active slide to the west. The plan was to move the lighthouse over to the vicinity of the small square in the upper right corner of the site. But this initial plan was abandoned. A memorandum of understanding was created after several days of negotiations between Chairman Tr Thomas Aurora with the Yurok Tribal Council, the Trinidad Civic Club, and Chairman Garth Sundberg with the Chure Heights Indian Community of the Trinidad Rancheria Tribal Council. The Trinidad Rancheria made a very generous offer to provide a temporary site for the lighthouse on their harbor land there had previously been no other sites available. Both tribal governments pledged to provide resources and assistance in moving the lighthouse. On January 10th, 2018, a huge crane from Sacramento was positioned to lift the 20 ton lighthouse and the 4,000 pound historical bell. The crane had to reach out 60 feet. So that required heavy ballasts to support the weight, which you can see being placed by the workers in this photograph. The fog bell was lifted onto a low boy truck donated by the Big Lagoon Rancheria and driven down to the temporary site. 
Next, the lighthouse was prepared for lifting. Four rectangular holes were cut in the bottom of the lighthouse into which two large beams were inserted that came out the other side. These were used to attach the cables for lifting the lighthouse. The Memorial Lighthouse was carefully positioned on a second Loboy truck donated by the Trinidad Rancheria. Then the truck began the journey down Edwards Street. While we all hoped that it would safely arrive at its temporary home. The crane had to be repositioned to lift the lighthouse off the truck and onto the sand. We were so grateful to the expertise of the crew who safely delivered the lighthouse to its new location. Because this beautiful iconic landmark is more than just a replica to Humboldt County residents, the Trinidad Civic Club is determined to build a permanent home for the Memorial Lighthouse. As stewards of the lighthouse and Memorial Park where the engraved wall plaques are located, we are responsible to the people who have entrusted us with preserving the memory of loved ones for future generations. The lighthouse has been in this temporary location for over three years. The intervening time has not been kind as the winds have scoured away the sand it rested on without a foundation. Photographer Zach Stanton beautifully captured the essence of the current state of the Memorial Lighthouse with the title of his photograph, Lighthouse in Limbo. But progress is being made to remediate the situation as each hurdle in the process is overcome by the Trinidad Civic Club. During the moving process, a number of people approached the Trinidad Civic Club Oops, let's see what happened there. Yeah. Um, with their ideas about where the Memorial Lighthouse should be permanently located, some very passionate, convinced that their idea would be the perfect solution. So the Trinidad Civic Club developed a list of potential sites from these recommendations and invited the community to help determine which sites were viable. A site selection advisory committee was formed to advise the Civic Club members of viable sites, consisting of three representatives from the Trinidad Rancheria, four from the Yurok tribe, and three of the Lighthouse leadership team representing the Civic Club. There were six sites considered at the meeting, but an additional three sites were eliminated because they were private property and not for sale. Publicity for the event included directions for those unable to attend to submit written input. The City Club created a seven point selection criteria to be considered with each of the potential sites. I'll give you a minute to look at those. A presenter was recruited for each site to share information while photographs were projected on the screen of the site. After the presentations, participants were invited to share their pro and con ideas on charts for each site. Participants were then asked to gather in small groups to discuss the most viable site sketch maps and share their ideas for which sites they would recommend. And then these uh, recommendations were shared out to the whole group. When all the written input was tabulated, 
Only one site met all seven criteria and was considered most viable. The Civic Club members were presented with packets of written information for each of the six sites and ultimately voted to establish a permanent home for the Memorial Lighthouse in the Trinidad Harbor. The next step involved hiring an engineering firm to conduct soil studies and identify four possible sites in the harbor area. When those sites were analyzed, only one site could be considered viable, the current location of the lighthouse. Engineers determined that the new memorial site would be built under and behind the lighthouse, raising it up to create a prominent setting and a beautiful ocean view. The design includes future memorial walls, the historic bell in the front, with an antique anchor dredge from Humboldt Bay and two benches in the upper area behind the lighthouse. The upper area is accessible by a trail that leads from the road to the back of the lighthouse. The sign at the top of the slide is an enlargement of the sign depicted on the front above the bell. As the club enters the permitting phase through applications to the Planning Commission or the City of Trinidad and the California Coastal Commission, it must demonstrate that the requirements are met and that the Memorial Lighthouse has community support. Your letters of support are needed and it would be greatly appreciated if you would email the Trinidad Planning Commission prior to June 11th. For information and prompts, please go to our Civic Club website. And if, if, if the information is not posted today, it should be posted real soon. The Planning Commission packet will be posted also on June 11th and will be available on the city website under the Documents Library tab. That um, packet will include um, a, a public meeting a PDF with 84 pages, which documents all the written input uh, at the meeting and also um, a site search analysis. So if you're curious about the other sites, then that would be the document to look for in that packet. Since 2017, the Civic Club has been fundraising nonstop. The club paid $80,000 to move the lighthouse and will spend over $50,000 for engineers that studied the site, designed the memorial, and will oversee bids and the construction process. Although the final budget projections have yet to be received, the club is currently raising funds to match a $50,000 grant from an anonymous donor who has pledged another $50,000 when we match the donation. Since anticipated construction costs fall in the neighborhood of $300,000, the club needs to raise approximately $180,000 by next summer. The club's online Trinidad Marketplace is part of the fundraising campaign. Beautiful silver Baroni starfish jewelry is available for very reasonable prices, along with the pictured memorabilia items. The Coastal Village Gallery features paintings by Paul Ricard with photographs by Richard Pompas and Zach Stanton. Another part of the marketplace features special offerings of local merchants with a portion of sales supporting the project. Please remember the Trinidad Marketplace when you want to find unique items and gifts. Friends of the Memorial Lighthouse is a donor recognition program to acknowledge appreciation at different levels of contributions, though donations of any amount are always welcome.
the beautiful Memorial Lighthouse is gone from its former historic site, but it will rise again in 2022. The future of the Memorial Lighthouse Project depends on community support to preserve this historic 70-year-old structure. The unique design will serve the community for decades to come as a monument preserving maritime history dedicated to those lost or buried at sea. The project will restore and preserve the iconic lighthouse, fulfilling its original purpose to honor the past and serve as a beacon of hope for the future. I hope this presentation about the past, present, and future of the Memorial Lighthouse has enlightened and entertained you, but most of all, inspired you to join and help preserve this beloved historic landmark. Thank you for participating in the session today. Well, thank you, Jan. What a, um, so full of great information. Um, we really appreciate you sharing about that. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can raise your hand or you can put them in the chat. I know that there were a couple questions early on. Um, Lynn asked about um, where she could find the story of the 200 foot wave. And Rebecca shared um, a link in the chat to, um, it looks like a story by Brian Tussaud. Um, so that is, that's in the chat too. And then there was one question that said, have they taken into account the possibility of another 200 foot wave? And do waves ever reach the, um, the location? And I'm assuming that's the location of the new Memorial Lighthouse. Okay, thank you. Um, there, it, I would urge you when you search online to look for the journal of the lighthouse keeper. I think that would provide the most um, direct and um, detailed account of what happened. But there are many entries uh, regarding it. it. It was a pretty amazing event. Um, as far as we know, there have not been waves to the site of uh, where the lighthouse uh, will be is located and, and will be located. Um, it is 29 feet above sea level. And <clears throat> so we're hoping that that's enough to protect it from most uh, wave events that, that might occur, any, any kind of a significant wave that gets that high uh, would be a pretty big wave, true. So we have Katie with her hand raised. Katie, if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, um, my name's Katie. I grew up in Trinidad in the 70s and 80s, although I no longer live in the area. And my question is, um, maybe this was covered, but are people who were on the Memorial Wall, did they only sail from Trinidad Harbor or did they sail from any other Humboldt ports? Okay, so the wall has two categories. Uh, one is lost at sea, and the other is buried at sea. So those lost at sea have generally been ones in the vicinity, but due to some accident, uh, were unfortunately lost. Um, the buried at sea um, people are from different areas, um, not just Trinidad, but you know, from several other areas. Maybe someone used to live in Trinidad or the parents of someone that does live in Trinidad. Um, there's kind of a story with, with each name on the wall. Did that answer your question? It did. And I, I know people on the wall and I participated in all that as a kid. So um, I was just curious. I just never really had this um, clarification. Also, I was just texting with Zach Stanton, who's thrilled his picture was used in this presentation. So thank you. Awesome, we love Zach's picture. And he has been so um, generous to give us permission to use that photograph and to sell copies of it. And if you love it, like I do, I have one on the wall in my home. <laughs> I 
is available on our website in the uh, Coastal Village Gallery in the Trinidad Great. Marketplace. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. No problem. There's a comment that just says, excellent presentation. Congratulations to the Trinidad Civic Club for their success and continued efforts. And then another question, how can people apply to be buried at sea? All right, so um, if you go on our website, trinidadcivicclub.org, um, there is information about, and the application to, to send to our Memorial uh, Lighthouse Secretary and um, you will be contacted and arrangements can be made <clears throat> for uh, the engraving. <clears throat> Excuse me, we engrave once a year and that's generally in April or early May before the memorial ceremony. And I put the date in for this year's ceremony, May 30th at 2 p.m. It's really quite a moving ceremony, I, I kind of feel like, although I tried my best to um, share, uh, you know, <clears throat> the parts of it and how moving it was, it just doesn't begin to express the experience of being there for that ceremony. I did put the um, Trinidad Civic Club um, website link in the chat. Um, and then there is a new question. Do the tribes continue to be supportive of the lighthouse? We have not heard from um, the Yurok tribe. Um, and so, so we don't know yet. We, su we suppose that there will be some kind of opposition that they will state it um, at the Trinidad Planning Commission meeting. Um, we know for some it's, it's a sensitive issue um, but we're hoping because of our uh, public meeting and involving the tribes and helping select the location that uh, our efforts um, to, to ask for their feedback and input have um, helped us select a site that would have the least opposition. For example, on the chart that had cons uh, listed about the a site in the harbor, there was not one mention of cultural sensitivity uh, to that location. It is located in the parking lot, um, just raised up to give it prominence. And, and so we feel that, you know, we have made every effort to arrive at a, a, a location that we're hoping everyone will be able to live with. That sounds good. So, so the land that the um, Memorial Lighthouse will be on or that it's on right now, is that, who, whose land is that? That was uh, offered to us through the Trinidad Rancheria. And I, at the time, um, I, I mentioned in the presentation, we had no other options for where to put it. So not only did they um, prepare the site at no cost to us, there had to be grading and you know, flattening to, to, to create a place to put the lighthouse. But um, they have expressed interest in, in what we do, the fact that this is a community service for, for grieving families. And um, they are honored to have the lighthouse uh, in the Harbor property, which uh, belongs to them. Most of it. There's a little bit that belongs to the city, little strips here and there. All right. Any other questions? I don't see any hands or any chat. Oh, here we go. Bob, Mary, thank you very much for joining us and for your supportive feedback. And maybe there are any questions because you did such a fine presentation. Right. We don't have any. <laughs> It was really well done and very informative. And thank you ever so much. Um, thank you. We really appreciate your having put that together and going through the history. And we wish you great luck and hope lots of people from this uh, presentation today will contribute to your cause and uh, make this happen soon. And if no other questions, Thank you, everybody. That was wonderful. We all appreciate it ever so much.